Uh, yes, it is, and uh, we uh, welcome you to the program. If you want us online, boomersbraintrust.com. You can find us there, and you can find the audio, video, all that stuff. Guest segments, first five, boomersbraintrust.com. Another hour just ahead, by the way. We'll hear more from the Brain Trust, so if you have a money question, you're certainly welcome to call after the top of the hour, 877-PLANNER, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. Some leftover news items, Dinah Smith. Yes, sir. You know, and I, I got to say it this way, in honor of her retirement this week. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, it's Barbara Walters week, man. She's, she's retiring. She, she's sort of, uh, she wow. hated that whole Baba Wawa she thing. She did. And now I think she's sort of made fun of it now and... So yep. we're, we're, we're laughing with her. We're, honestly, we're not laughing at her. Um, you know, it's funny. She has interviewed. Who hasn't? She didn't interview you, uh, but she has well, interviewed pretty much I everyone. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she says her best interview was uh, Catherine Hepburn. And I remember really? that wow. interview. Uh, she said the worst one she ever encountered was uh, Warren Beatty. Really? Yeah. Very. Was, I don't was, think was he was Warren a very. Or something, no, or? I don't think he was very forthcoming. I think he was oh. kind of arrogant and. Uh, yeah. She does uh, some trivia here. She does not like to be photographed from her right, right side. side. I read that. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? I don't care. This is me. Right, I gotta tell you, left, Barbara. Whatever. I mean, I, I uh, forget the view. I, I can't stand yeah. that. And I don't think that's what she meant it to be. I think that's more of a. It's you know, evolved. Into I think it's evolved, and yeah. I think she's probably just going along, going along with it. But I tell you what, I got a lot of respect for. Barbara Walters, and I'm not just I saying that. Well. I really, I'm not that. I don't. I don't like to pander to people. I don't like to do that whole thing. But when you talk about people who really sort of broke through, mm -hmm. I mean, this sounds trite, and I don't want it to sound like that. But not at who, all. People who broke through. Well, she we did. We boomers remember this. She was the first one, uh, first woman to earn a right. million dollars a year when she took the anchor desk uh, well, with Harry Reisner. Yeah, and 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 you've hung out. You. <laughs> You've hung out with big, big time network guys, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, if you, we, we've hung out with them in the '80s, but I tell you what, the '60s and '70s. I mean, these guys. You want, you want Anchorman uh, squared. You know, you want Ron Burgundy squared. Mm -hmm. You want that kind of stuff cubed. I mean, that's what it was. It absolutely was. And uh, so, uh, I, I've got just, I, I've got an immense amount of respect for her and pioneering and all that stuff mm -hmm. um and i don't i don't say that often i really don't no you don't i don't like to say well the first I know you woman mean who did it. this i do i absolutely <laughs> mean it so barbara hey listen hats off to you the the, the baba wawa thing notwithstanding that right. was you know kind of a funny deal but anyway i just want to here's say something you probably don't know and What's i didn't that? know that maybe you do well you probably do of course you do that her cousin her second cousin oh, yeah. actually nancy yeah is the one married, married to paul to mccartney i did not know that did well, not, I guess because I didn't go to the wedding. You did. Like she Roy needs did. more. Everybody yeah, else that's went. That's true, yeah. I didn't Where get were an you, invite. by the way? Why were you not part of that? Well, I didn't get an invite, John. Thanks. Oh, you didn't get, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. What do you got? Well, I, I, I was just going to say something about the Dow. It continues its record run. I don't know. Do people care about this? You know, I was talking about this with Professor Plum off the air. That it's doing well? Yeah, but, but what does, does it mean care? now? Well, what does it mean? I mean, for I the average know. person, and this has been my question all along. Okay, the Dow is up, S and P inching above its previous. It was down earlier today, right? But it hit it hit its high. Nasdaq was sort of that dragged down by Cisco Systems, but it was up in the high sixteen thousands. And you know, it used to be a mark of the economy doing well. At least that's how I always looked at it, and people generally did well. I don't know. I'm looking at it now, and I think most people say, "Well, you could have fooled me." I mean, how does that help me? I, I'm speaking for the average. I think person. it's the overall feeling. You know, and I don't mean the, the things that are going to be reflected in the overall consumer confidence or comfort level or anything like that. Yeah. I think it just it just is a it bodes well for the general feeling of the public about the economy. OK, maybe and nothing it does. more. Maybe it does. I know when people see that, you know, stocks are down, they hit record lows. Everybody feels rotten. Well, yeah, even if you're not heavily into stocks, I, I think just, people get. Antsy, we're, we're still smarting from seven years ago. The good thing is, the good thing is, of course, that people who are invested, people who did not jump out of the market years ago, back in 08 and 09, and panicked and never got back mm -hmm. in, or people who thought that they were trying to time the market. The good news is that they're up like 30 percent. I was looking at my Roth. Well, actually, my Roth, one, two of my Roths, my traditional. I mean, okay, thank you. Yes. That's actually very, very nice. There you go, and that's, just, that's real experience. That's real. Yeah. All right. That's good thing. The right other people, the, the people are saying, okay, now we're waiting because we're going to have a pullback. So <laughs> I'm not predicting. But anyway, that was the other story that was in the news. Well, celebrate for heaven's sakes. Get yourself a craft beer, would you? Uh, it's American <laughs> Craft Beer Week, May 12th through the 18th, and there are activities everywhere, especially in uh, areas like 
where we live, San Diego, that is a huge craft beer market. Really? Southern uh, California is, is big for craft really beer. Really okay. big. Uh, consumers spend an estimated $14.3 billion on craft beer. That's just on craft beer. That's not running down to the 7-Eleven and picking up the okay, now pack of PBR. For those boomers who are uh, you know, not necessarily beer savvy, mm -hmm. explain what craft beer is. It means that uh, these are usually offered up by either small entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or small businesses mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they, they tend to go for more of the hoppy flavor. They, uh, hoppy, not hockey just in case you thought I said hockey. Uh, they, they really get into their hops. They really get into, I mean, because that's the key ingredient. Flavor, all the bitterness, that comes from hops. And um, that's also, it, it, the hop business is huge right now, especially in... Business is hopping, I, I get, yeah, okay, yeah. But you're, you're, you're serious. Yeah, it's like uh, flavor hops uh, favored by craft brewers right now, about 7 to $10 a pound. Okay. Okay. Uh, so people are celebrating yeah. this as being a, a craft beer week. It's wonderful. All right. Well, good for them. And uh, here's, here's an example, okay? Um, new beers, all the new ones, the U.S. craft breweries, 2,768 last year alone. And that's Wait. up 15% from 2012. So It's so, just growing by leaps and bounds, Okay, not hops. So it's, it's hopping by leaps and bounds. <laughs> so so d does this mean that, that we're going to see now a, a craft beer crash? Is this the deal? No, or? no, no. I don't think so at all. No? Because, uh, come on, really? Even in the bad times, beer and liquor and everything else does well. Well, right? I would think, especially in the bad times, beer and liquor does really well. Craft, there... craft brew now accounts for 8% of the total uh, U.S. beer market. Oh, okay. All so right. it's, it's, it is definitely growing. But so, you still have people, you know, sitting back in the porch sucking down a, 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 a PBR? Hams. A hams. A hams. <laughs> right? Why don't you open a Stroh's How and an Olympia while you're well, at what it, do I know? You know, What do I know about I know, that? You know, I know. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> well, look, uh, the happiest countries in the world, and I'll talk more about this later, the USA doesn't make the cut once again. How oh, do you no. figure that? You're kidding. The Better Life Index rates the 34 member nations on 11 variables that, that contribute to a high quality of life, including income, education, housing, health, and life satisfaction. All right? The countries with the highest life satisfaction score will go from number five to number one. Austria was number five. Okay. Denmark, number four. Canada, Canada, number three. Uh, Norway came in at number two. And s number one was Switzerland. Man. Switzerland. They're happy in Switzerland. Those are happy people. They're happy folks. If you want to look at the others, there was Iceland, Australia. Finland, Mexico, and the Netherlands. Uh, I, I was trying to find a, uh, a theme through this. What makes them happy? Cold weather in some of them, but no. Australia? Yeah. I don't know. You got room there, too. Room I'm going to have beaches. to look more into this. I'll report more on that later. Uh, we got, we're out of time for this hour. We have more coming up. We've got Professor Plum back in answering your money questions. So if you have a money question, we've got lines open right now. You can get on board. 877-PLANNER is our number, P-L-A-N-E-R. We are coming right back as the Boomer's Brain Trust Program.